Today, we're doing whole number operations. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, what exactly are whole numbers again? Don't worry, whole numbers, they're just numbers that are whole. That means no fractions, no decimals. So zero, one, two, three, four, and keep going. Those are your whole numbers. Operations, that's simple. That's just addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So basically, today, we're learning how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide whole numbers. But don't worry, we're not just doing three plus four or five times seven. We're gonna be adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing two, three, four, possibly even five digit numbers. So let's get to it. Before we get to the first example, there's a few terms we need to go over, and those are sum, difference, product, and quotient. Sum just means the answer to an addition problem. Difference, the answer to a subtraction problem. Product, answer to a multiplication problem. And you could probably guess quotient is the answer to a division problem. And so for example, the sum of six and two, we would translate to six plus two, which would be eight. So the sum of six and two is eight. The difference of six and two would then be six minus two, which is four. A couple things to pay attention to is the order. With addition and multiplication, the order doesn't matter because if I do six plus two or two plus six, the answer is still gonna be eight. It doesn't make a difference. However, with subtraction and division, the order does matter. So if it says this, uh, the difference of six and two that means six minus two. However, if it said the difference of two and six, then we have to change the order and that would mean two minus six, which you're gonna find out in future videos is gonna be negative four. So with addition and multiplication, the order doesn't matter, you can change them up, it's okay, it's not gonna change uh, what the answer is. But with subtraction and division, keep the order the same. However it's written, whatever comes first, make sure you do that first and then the next number. Now that we understand that, let's get to the first example. What is the sum of Bob's monthly expenses? The question says, what is the sum? And if we remember what we just learned, sum is the answer to an addition problem, which means we need to add up all of those monthly expenses. That's gonna be pretty challenging, so let's try something a little simpler first. So for example, what if we wanted to add 132 plus 365? The key with adding two, three, four, however many digit numbers, adding or subtracting, is to pay attention to the place values. That's gonna be really, really important with addition and subtraction especially. And what do I mean by that? Well, let's first look at these two numbers and kind of break them apart. 132. That is, if we break it apart, well, we have two ones. That three is really 30 because that three is in the tens place. So that's a 30 and then the one, what place value is that in? That's in the hundreds place. So that's not really just a one, that's a 100. So we could think of 132 as 100 plus 30 plus two. No worries, we haven't changed anything yet. Let's do the exact same thing for the 365. Well, that would be, we've got 300 plus that six, again in the tens place, so that's really a 60, and then five ones, well that's just five. Now, if you were gonna add 100 plus 30 plus two plus 300 plus 60 plus five, how would you do it? Chances are, I'm guessing, you're probably gonna group the hundreds together, you're probably gonna group the tens together, you're, and then you're probably gonna group the ones together. And that is the most efficient way to do it. That's exactly right. That would save the most amount of time and makes the most sense. And so let's do that. Well, 100 plus 300, that gives us 400. Cross those out. And remember, because we're adding, the order doesn't matter, so we can do this. Uh, the 30 plus the 60, 30 plus 60 is 90, and then two plus five, two plus five is seven, 
So 40 plus 90 is 490, plus 7 is 497. Well, we just added two three-digit numbers. You might be thinking to yourself, do we have to do that each time? And the answer, luckily, is no, we don't. Now let's go back to example one and learn a more efficient way to add multi-digit numbers. Let's first start with his rent, which is 1,250. I'm gonna put that at the very top, and the reason I'm starting with that is because it has four digits. I just kinda of like to organize it where whatever numbers with the most digits go at the top, and I work my way down. Next, I'm gonna do his food, which was 425. And what you're gonna notice is I am lining the numbers up based on their place values. So like I said, what we did before, we broke those numbers apart and added uh, the hundreds together and the tens together and the ones together, uh, and then we combined it all at the end. We're doing the exact same here, the exact same thing here. The only difference is we're organizing them vertically. So next, let's go with utilities, which is $167. 167. Then I'm going to do entertainment, which was 234. 234. Uh, next, we've got transportation for 86. And finally, miscellaneous was $79. 79, we are adding all of those up together. So that is how I'm going to set up anytime I'm adding two, three, four digit numbers. You wanna add it up like that. So now we're gonna just add up column by column, starting on the right side and moving our way left. So here we go. Uh, in that first column, zero plus five is five, plus seven is 12, plus four is 16, plus six more gives us 22, plus nine gives us 31. Well, we can't write 31 in the ones place because there's two digits. We only have place for one digit. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the one in the ones place from that 31. Remember that three represents 30. So what are we gonna do? We call it carrying. We're gonna carry the three, and we're gonna write a little three just above the next column. And that column is the tens column. So that makes sense. So now we've got three more that we need to add in that next column, the tens column. So let's start there. So three plus five gives us eight, plus two is 10, 16, 19, 27, 34. The exact same thing we did before. We're gonna put the four down there and we're gonna carry the three from that 34. Same thing, three plus two is five, plus four is nine, 10, 11, 12. Write down the two, carry the one. It was 12, remember, so we're carrying a one this time. And one plus one gives us two, which means Bob's monthly expenses are $2,241. Dollars. And Bob is probably thinking, hmm, that's a lot of expenses each month. All right, let's try part B. If Bob makes $3,020 after tax, how much does he have left after paying his monthly expenses? We already know how much his monthly expenses are. We just found that out in the uh, problem before. And we know how much he's making each month. So to find out how much he has left, that's the key word there, we just need to do subtraction. And just like with addition, where we lined up the place values, we're gonna do the exact same thing with subtraction. So Bob makes $3,020. We're gonna put that at the top. And then we're gonna subtract his monthly expenses, which were $2,241. And notice, again, the ones places lines up, the tens, the hundreds, and the thousands. So now let's subtract. Well we need to do first uh, the ones column. Same thing with addition, we start in the column on the right and move our way left. So I gotta do zero minus one, and you might be thinking, well, I can't do that. If I have zero, I can't subtract anything from that. And so in this case, what we are doing, instead of carrying, we're gonna do the opposite, and we're gonna borrow. So 
if I, if I can't do the subtraction, I need to borrow from the column to the left. That, so in this case, I can't do zero minus one, so I need to borrow a 10 from this two. So I cross out the two, and now it becomes a one. Now what did I do? That, was a, that, was, that two was essentially a 20, remember, because it's in the tens place. So I'm borrowing 10 from that, so now there's only 10 there, that one. And I'm gonna put a little one next to the zero, making it 10. And now I can do 10 minus one. So that's the whole point of borrowing, so we can do the subtraction. Addition, you carry. Subtraction, you might have to borrow. So now 10 minus one gives me nine. Gotta make sure everything lines up. Now the next one, one minus four. Same problem. I can't do one minus four, so I need to borrow. I go to the hundreds place. I can't borrow from the zero because there's nothing there. So I go all the way to the thousands place. And this is how we're gonna do this. So first I need to borrow one from the thousands place. So that becomes a two. But that one in the thousands place first has to go to the hundredths place. So now I've got a 10 in the hundredths place, which means now I can borrow from that. So I'm gonna cross that off, and that's now a nine. And now I borrowed from the hundreds place, so I bring that over to the tens place, and that one is now 11. So 11 minus four, that's gonna be seven. Nine minus two is also seven, and two minus two is zero. I could put the zero there, but I don't really need to. Well, Bob has $779 left over each month. Here's a few more to try on your own.